This is the story of our family's first adventure to Alaska on Holland America's cruise ship, the Amsterdam. On our way, we would make a stop in Oregon for Trevor's graduation and pick up Nana, who would be our fellow adventurer. Where are we off to? Alaska! Bren, will you check under the car? Any cats? After checking the garage carefully for cats, we headed to Billings, where we spent the night and fueled up on breakfast. Then we were off cross country, headed for Oregon, where we would meet up with Trevor. We saw a lot of great places along the way, and we enjoyed some great food. The drive from Sheridan, Wyoming to Ashland, Oregon is about 20 hours, so we tried to break it up as much as we could with stops along the way. This was a refueling stop. We stopped in the tiny town of Grass Valley, Oregon so that the kids could let off some steam. Well, all of us were able to let off a little bit of steam. We leaned over the bridge at the Ogden State Scenic Viewpoint. We entered Crater Lake National Park where there was still a lot of snow in June. Bren loved it. Crater Lake Lodge is located a thousand feet above the lake on the southwest rim of the Crater Lake Caldera. It's almost 100 years old, having been built in 1915 to provide overnight accommodations to visitors. We arrived in Ashland after dark. Go knock. Hey. Hey. Hi, Trev. Hey, How you doing? As soon as we arrived in Ashland, we took Trevor with us to the Medford, Oregon airport, where we picked up Nana. She flew in this evening from Dallas to see Trevor's graduation and, of course, to see the rest of us. So, yeah, now we say, oh, isn't it great? They graduated and they have a job. As soon as her bags arrived, we headed out for ice cream and then back to our hotel. Trevor's graduation! Yeah? What time is it, Krista? It's 7.17 in the yeah. morning. <laughs> Today, Trevor would graduate with his master's degree in music from Southern Oregon University. He already has a job lined up this fall, teaching elementary school kids music in Portland, Oregon. After Trevor's commencement ceremonies at Southern Oregon University's campus were over, we took Trevor and Moses out to eat lunch. We chose Smithfields in downtown Ashland, where we sat outside under the shade of a live oak tree to eat our meal. Yeah, that's very true. They had great steaks and ribs and all kinds of things on their extensive menu. <laughs> That's the nazi. All right. When we were done eating our meal, we all went outside and stood for a family photo. It was late in the day and we had to head for Seattle. We stopped in Portland on our way to see my nephew, Zach Parsons, who had just moved to Portland after graduating from BYU in landscape management. 
We had a fun time eating a buffet meal together, even though the restaurant was suspiciously empty. Happy Father's Day! Happy Father's Day! Yay. Today was the day we would finally board the ship, and we were all very excited to head for the port in Seattle. There's a space needle over to the left, you can see it now. They do now. This is kind of ruining my video rain. Well, welcome to Seattle. <laughs> it's right there. The smaller of the two. We arrived dockside at Holland America's cruise ship, the Amsterdam. Tate, turn around, she's gonna band you like a goose. Guys, don't they look like they're from a 42? <laughs> there. That window. Let's go explore the boat. Well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is your cruise director. I just want to remind you of some of the different events that are taking place right now. And later on this evening, you're on board the air. Let's go. Welcome on board. So glad you made it. And you are in for a Alaskan adventure. Yeah. You're not going to be overdressed for this place. What's happening? We're moving? I'm so excited! It is. It's pretty cool, huh? Daddy, will it go fast? Yeah, it's going to go much faster than this. Are we in the sea? Yeah. That's a sail. Oh, so, so you need to cross so, so the wind will push it? That's right. The wind pushes the sail. But we don't need cross. No, we have a different kind of boat that we're on. We're on a diesel ship. A diesel ship? Yeah, so we don't need the wind to sail with. So how do, so how do we get across? Uh, we have a, an engine and propellers. Oh, what are propellers? This evening we got dressed up and went to the ship's fancy restaurant, the Pinnacle Grill. Scoot around and I'll sit by you. <laughs> How was how was the escargot? Uh, actually, I thought it was pretty good. It, it was good, wasn't it? Yeah. How was the escargot, girls? Uh, it was actually it was not bad. It, it was surprisingly good, wasn't it? <laughs> your your ribeye looks pretty good. My filet mignon is delicious. It's really good. After dinner, we went down to the lounge to see shows and comedians. Okay, ask any one of the girls. The best part about a cruise ship is breakfast in bed. You just check boxes the night before and it magically appears. The pool isn't bad either. And then there's ice cream available 24 hours a day. Our cruise ship even had a shopping mall set up outside around the pool so that we could buy souvenirs from Alaska without even having to get off of the boat. Tess found a wolf who would be her companion on the boat. By far one of our favorite activities was just sitting and talking after eating a meal in the Lido Buffet. My brand. Both Tate and Tess made friends in the kids program, Club Hal. 
we soaked up the sun in the crow's nest while we listened to people cheer for the United States in the World Cup games. At three o'clock in the afternoon, they served high tea. We experimented with all kinds of herbal teas. Okay, what kind of tea is it? Orange spice. Orange spice, all right, let's see it change color. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> changing color yet? Not yet. I'll shake it. <laughs> yeah? What did you get? What All sweet. <laughs> well, it's kind of a... I can't remember what it's called. But it's not bad. And then I got chocolate and white uh, woven bread and an eclair. I got banana bread and whatever this is with berries. And I had a big dollop of cream here that I used on my almond roll. But what was the best part? Better, even better than the chocolate. Breakfast in bed. You just ordered breakfast and had breakfast in bed. So what did they bring you for breakfast this morning? To your room. Eggs, hot chocolate, eggs, ham, eggs, ham, fruit loops, fruit bowl. Toast. So I'm gonna get toast tomorrow with a bunch of things of Nutella. Oh yeah. Nutella? Huh? How many packets of Nutella are you gonna order? Ten. All right, time for a nap. I'm feeling the shit move here. What do we get, Kate? Chocolate. Got a stingray. A stingray? Did he make your bed? It's a stingray on the bed. No. No. It's quarter to ten. It looks like it's And the it's sun's five. still up. It looks like it's five. Isn't that crazy? The midnight sun. You going to bed? You know, I'm waiting for my shrimp cocktail. You fall asleep, what happens to your ice cream? That'll eat it. Oh, you're not eating Yeah. It's Tuesday morning and we woke up. And this is what we encountered outside. We're supposed to go sightseeing today in a fjord to see a glacier, but it's pouring rain outside. The winds are going. There's probably 10 foot swells. They were five foot yesterday and these are at least twice as high. And there's a dense fog that's settled in. An emergency. <laughs> yeah. I was. You should have oh, can I run? Can I run? Can I go upstairs? Tate brought this back to the table and I said, oh! Tate, that looks good. What kind is it? And she said, I don't know. I just wanted the raspberry. And it's gone. <laughs> eggnog yeah, it's self-serve now. Krista says the eggnog mousse tastes like Christmas. Does it? What'd you find? I don't know. It's just a black horse. Eggnog? Eggnog mousse. Mint tea. It's very good. Did you know you can make them from the fresh mint leaves in our garden? Yeah, but I, I, I don't want to. Oh. Well. The rain and fog continued in Stephen's passage off the southeastern coast of Alaska. We were headed for Tracy Arm Fjord, where we would see a large glacier at its end. We found ourselves jockeying for a good position where we might be able to see the glacier better, maybe somewhere dry and warm. <laughs> Pretty wet out here, isn't it, Tay? <laughs> Look at that fog. Hey, cool. Kind of move it in. Tracy Arm Fjord is a long, narrow waterway, just wide enough to allow a cruise ship to pass. Isn't it beautiful? Steep granite walls rise right up out of the ocean, and waterfalls stripe the sides of the fjord. Over 30 miles long, up to a third of the fjord is covered in ice. At the end of the fjord are the twin Sawyer glaciers. Either. 
We weren't sure how close we would be able to get to the glacier because of large chunks of ice floating in the water. But there it was, Sawyer Glacier. It's huge. You see it, Tess? You see the big glacier down there? for a family and they were standing in front of the glacier and it's a very nice picture and then right before I snapped it she went <laughs> so now they're letting the port side of the boat see the glacier <laughs> everybody gets a chance from their stateroom there's a family that was taking pictures uh -huh. a little girl is about two two and a half and they were holding up a packet of saltines and she would smile <laughs> and then they take it away and then they take another picture and hold Go inside where it's warm now? Yep. I got in the elevator and um, this little kid ran off laughing. So I get on the elevator and I see all the buttons <laughs> lit up like a Christmas tree. I'm like, oh. No, I didn't think it was very funny. Now it's now it's a little funny. <laughs> Tate is all dressed and ready to go to dinner. Tate is ready. Or Tess is ready. One of those TNT kids. Um, I think you can just put that as your salad dish. I think we should get the seafood platter and the duck pate because I want to try duck pate. Duck pate. What happens on the cruise? <laughs> it stays on the pepper. It's a in the office. God. Anything that happens. I'm eating it the fancy way, but not the fancy way. Ten, twelve at night. It looks like it's like seven, eight out and there. It's still light out there. We're in Juno. Here's the view from the window. We got off the boat in Juno, and it was our first time in Alaska. We were sure glad it was June because it was freezing cold. We found some benches where we sat down to put on hats, gloves, coats, and scarves, whatever we could find. Huh? The oh. tram takes us up there to the top of Mount Roberts. You see it up there? Why? Thank you. All right, jump on. The Gold Belt Mount Roberts Tramway opened in 1996. It connects downtown Juneau to the top of Mount Roberts, which is high above downtown Juneau. The people here say that it's the only aerial tramway in southeast Alaska, and it rises steeply 1,800 feet. <laughs> well, that's a halfway point. The tramway took us high above a rainforest to the mountain house, where we had great views of the city of Juneau and Gastineau Channel, which is a narrow strip of seawater between two mountains. The people who operate the Mount Roberts tramway claim that it is one of the most vertical tramways in the world. Don't rock the tram. <laughs> we weren't sure exactly what we would find at the top, but we did find a goat <laughs> and a gift shop, so it was pretty fun. Oh, that's nice. We did find a theater where we learned about the Clinket Indian tribe, native to Juneau, and we did see some people playing Christmas music in the lobby. That's how cold it was. We left the gift shop and went out to the observation deck to look out at the city and water below. Oops, careful Nana. We also checked out the map and found the nature center. They make you carry that in your teeth? You're taking me hiking <laughs> with my walker. <laughs> How's the nature center? It 
it was soon time to leave our perch atop Mount Roberts. We headed back down to sea level and then boarded some buses that were waiting for us. Okay, big step, big step. We had tickets for the best of Juneau whale watching tour, and so we boarded buses to take us north to Auk Bay. Here we would board a sightseeing boat to see humpback whales on their annual summer migration to Alaskan waters. The boat was named the St. Gregory. Sounded safe enough. All right, good morning everyone and welcome aboard the St. Gregory. As we get underway this morning, I do have a few safety announcements for you. Today we do have some complimentary beverages. We have hot chocolate and then I will be sending out some donut holes here in just a few minutes. And those are complimentary as well. Nana found the hot cocoa and Tate found the donut holes, so all was right. So we do have to keep our eyes all around the boat looking at the water and also along the shoreline. Never know what we're going to see out here on the water. But I'll... And all of a sudden there they were. We saw them. Like we have two right there. So the humpback whales do travel from Hawaii back to Alaska every summer. So this is their feeding ground. Uh, so the humpback whale population uh, all around the Juneau area uh, is here right now for one reason, and that is to eat as much as they can before they return back to Hawaii where they have their breeding and mating grounds. There he is. Oh! He's wow. slapping the water. Oh. <laughs> We waved goodbye to the whales and they waved back with their pectoral fins. We had been watching the whales in a place called North Pass, just off the southern tip of Lincoln Island. Now we headed south to Colt Island where we would eat a salmon lunch at Orca Point Lodge. The tide was out and it was pretty windy when we arrived at Colt Island, but we brought our appetites with us. We walked up the dock in search of the lodge and its dining room. What? It's very common. What kind of tea is that? Mint herbal tea? Um, as long as you have no hand sanitizer on, you can pretty much touch anything. You're not going to touch that one, are you? Uh -huh. After lunch, we got back on the boat, and they took us back to the dock at Ock Bay. Here we boarded a bus which would take us to our next stop, Mendenhall Glacier, just north of Juneau. Nana. The buses dropped us off and promised to return. We walked along a pathway with lots of others to the Mendenhall Glacier Visitor Center, part of the Tongass National Forest operated by the United States Forest Service. The center receives half a million visitors a year, most coming, like us, from cruise ships. Mendenhall Glacier is a 12 mile long glacier fed by hundreds of miles of smaller glaciers. We had some great views from the balcony and windows of the visitor center. We had to put up with a little bit of shaming about receding glaciers and how evil people are, but 
I thought the glacier was beautiful and the ice was really blue. How old is it? 200 years old. Is it cold? <laughs> the buses did come back as promised and we got on board and headed back to the cruise ship. We managed to stay dry as the rainstorm didn't hit until after we boarded the buses. Of course, it was still sprinkling when we arrived back at the cruise ship. We were all very happy to find the Lido Buffet waiting for us back on the ship. It's just after 7 in the morning and we have arrived in Sitka, Alaska. This is our first view. There's no dock or anything so we have to anchor and then they have uh, little uh, tender boats that bring us into the dock. So I think that was that crashing sound, <laughs> big splash. Our Nana's already down there. Oh, Nana's already down there? Okay, down you go. Too. Thank you. Over you go. In the confusion of getting to the tenders, Nana had left before us and so we were separated. She had taken the boat at just ahead of ours. We caught up to her when we got to the dock though. We have our own welcoming party. Look. Well that was fun. Our first goal was to find a post office so that we could send postcards. Okay, so where's the post office you speak of? I think I was just appeasing you for the time being. <laughs> we did find a post office and a gift shop as well. Yeah. We found that Sitka didn't have a whole lot of attractions if you weren't going whale watching, and we had just been in Juneau yesterday. Get it? Good job. We made the best of it, and we explored the green space along the waterfront. We looked at boats. Yeah. If we lived here, if we lived here, is this where we would keep our boat? Yep. We found a boat with a tent on it for camping. We decided our boat was more comfortable than the one with the tent. We arrived at the Sitka Sound Science Center and saw and touched all kinds of starfish, mollusks, and anemones. Oh, yeah. What's that, Tate? Anemone. <laughs> oh, they just disappeared. Okay. Okay, touch it. Ixnay on what? I was so confused. I was like, wait. <laughs> what were we pointing out, Nana? The Those amorous like starfish? starfish. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> what my smart old granddaughter said it was a reflection. With that, we left the Sitka Sound Science Center and headed back along the waterfront to Harrigan Centennial Hall where we enjoyed a free concert featuring a cellist and a pianist playing Bach. Ketchikan, Alaska, and wouldn't you know it, it was pouring rain. The first thing we did when we got off the ship was find a portico where we could hide out from the rain and figure out how to put our rain ponchos on. It's just a poncho, honey. There's no, there's no armhole. We made our way along the docks in our rain gear to our Bering Sea Crab Fisherman Tour aboard the Aleutian Ballad. 
This fishing vessel was one of the ships featured in season two of Discovery Channel's show Deadliest Catch, and now it gives tours to cruise ship passengers who want to see how their dinner is caught. We found some seats in the stands up out of the rain and waited for the show to begin. A fine for venomous. Now it's not enough venom to kill you, but it will enhance the experience. They took us out to an island inhabited by scores of bald eagles, and we watched in amazement as they tossed chunks of fish to the eagles, who were obviously very happy to see our tour boat arrive. <laughs> they swooped down, swooped over, swooped. You could not take a picture and miss an eagle. How, how many eagles do you think there were? I think there were about 60. Yeah. Maybe, maybe more. And what kind of eagles were they? Bald eagles, big, massive, American bald eagles. Yeah. And then they pulled up the first crab pot, and the fun really began. Pull it up closer to your face, it makes a better picture. There you go. Nice work. Hey, Katie. Hey, nice work, Kate. Hey, look at this. You gonna hold this one, Nana? Yeah. Yeah, but but he can't. He's not gonna hurt you. He's not gonna hurt you. Okay. Well, but he's not going to pinch you. <laughs> Nana, you look so brave. <laughs> look up here. Get you on your little legs. Theater seats. Ooh, his little legs get you. Uh, I, I know, but he's, his pinchers are kind of close to me. What is he doing here? Look at him. Look at him. Tip his hand down. Pull it up. Hold it up. <laughs> well, this one looks like you might have pulled him off the buffet. <laughs> Tess, do you want to turn? No? Okay. Can you grab him right there? Now his tail can flip. He's got a... <laughs> What's that? He's the soothing black stuff. Is that caviar? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that's the first thing that looks delicious to me. I'll take your picture with him. Right behind my fingers. They also showed us king crab and a large octopus they pulled up as well. It was a great voyage and we had lots of hands-on fun with sea creatures. While the rest of us headed back to the ship by way of the souvenir shops by the docks, Bryn and I made a quick detour to see Creek Street. We had to hurry to be back on the ship by midday. Creek Street is a historic boardwalk shopping area built on wooden pilings along Ketchikan Creek. A century ago it was a red light district, but now there are art galleries, museums, and clothing shops along the creek. <laughs> no, just scoop it all out at once. Yeah. Do it. Oh, that's good. Isn't that good? <laughs> <laughs> she does a little lemon mousse dance <laughs> every time she. Chill. You're gonna film this entire thing. So far, it's been pretty entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> okay, watch. Watch. <laughs> and yet you keep eating it. I know. That's so awesome. Don't you guys feel bad you didn't get a lemon? No. We think it's the giant spoon. That's our theory. <laughs> you are right there. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> Where did you get that? You guys look good. It allows me oh, to get in them. Yeah. On his ear. It's all right. There you go. Uh, in men without ties or jackets, I thought you had to have a tie and a jacket. <laughs> Yum. I got some 
some herbal tea and some cheese and crackers coming with room service. I've got my show. And what's outside your window? Huge waves. Is and it rocking? the window. Yeah. Which is not comforting. <laughs> After I called room service, I was thinking hot chocolate. On our last full day at sea, the ship oh, had a talent show for the kids on board. Both Tess and Tate invited us to come and hear them sing. We're going to go ahead and get started. So first, please welcome Isabella and Tess. And, and hear us sing, let the storm rage on. The cold will never bother me anyway. Yeah. Right, Tate's nine years old from Wyoming, and she's going to be singing us a song. There is that lemon tea. Yeah, I got the last one. Well, I, I at first I didn't like them because one I bought them, but they have them at home. Good idea. You should wave to those people. Wave to them. They're waving to you. Wave back to the people from Victoria. Our last port of call was the city of Victoria in beautiful British Columbia. We left the sea terminal to board a bus that would take us on a tour of the city sites. A tour that was a bit abbreviated because the ship had arrived an hour and a half late. The bus took us to the Empress Hotel on the Victoria waterfront where we enjoyed sandwiches and pastries in the Empress Tea Room. The room is furnished with rich fabrics, tapestries and hand carved tables and has hosted royalty and celebrities. They even accommodated us with pineapple herbal tea. Classic cucumber, Moroccan chicken on a marble rye, roasted ham on cranberry bread, and egg salad on a mini croissant. Our signature raisin scones with our empress cream and strawberry jam, and the trick is to lather both on very heavily. <laughs> Citrus shortbread, Earl Grey mascarpone teacups, and girls, those are chocolate teacups, so eat away. And a Verona dark chocolate tart. It's a little teacup of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and what's it filled with? Just sugar and cream. Roasted ham on cranberry bread. Ooh, that looks really, really good. Ooh, the egg salad. Hi, Bryn. <laughs> that was just future a little Bryn. message to future Bryn. I just gave myself the eye. Oh. And that means something. Future so. Bryn just said something back. When we had eaten as much goodness as we could, we headed outside to enjoy the bright late evening sky of the longest day of the year as we looked out over Victoria's inner harbor. We left the Empress Hotel on the bus, which took us back to the Amsterdam. The kids couldn't wait to see what the stewards might have left in our cabin. An elephant! An elephant? And they gave us chocolate! <gasps> it you is guys got an animal? We got an elephant. We didn't get we one. We got an elephant. Take a picture of it. It was our last evening on the boat, and Bryn and I took a late walk on the promenade deck to take in the night sea air. Disembark the vessel at this time. Please remember to have with you your stateroom key card available to scan at our security terminal one final time as you make your way off the vessel. And on behalf of all of us here in Amsterdam, we hope you have a safe and pleasant journey home. My favorite thing was breakfast delivered to my door that every was day. That was Wasn't good. that the best that part was of the, the trip? Best. Yes, I love that. Yeah, what was the best part about being on a cruise ship? The attractive guys. The attractive guys <laughs> on the cruise ship. Huh? All right, Mom, I what did you? Attractive <laughs> Especially if there was a couple old geezers I saw coming down the hall. I loved the crab ship, the deadliest catch. That was my favorite. And I loved the well, the well watching. Ah, oh, that was so fun. Gentlemen, we are going to continue with our disembarkation procedure. Any purple. guests holding luggage tags, purple one. This is us! Gateway located on deck. Did you have fun? All right, I think we're ready. And with that, we headed off of Holland America's Amsterdam and back to the real world. 
We took Nana to the SeaTac airport to head back to Dallas and the rest of us returned to Sheridan, Wyoming by way of the Trans-Canada Highway. We had seen great sights, beginning with Trevor's graduation and then on to our Alaskan adventure. Blue ice glaciers, breaching whales, swooping bald eagles, monstrous crabs, beautiful mountains, great food and great fun. It was everything a vacation should have been. Yeah, but, but he can't, he's not going to hurt you. Very. <laughs> <laughs>